May the 2nd, 650 CE. With the May Day shindig over, it's time to move livestock away from my home of Sudtone to the summer grazing areas in warmer forest. I must go away from my family for all the summer. I don't enjoy the journey that takes about two weeks. The sheep are difficult to control and, like me, don't like to leave their winter quarters. My dog, Alja, helps a great deal. I couldn't do this without him and he knows it. This year I am solely responsible for 25 of my very own sheep. Until now, my mother Ellsworth has accompanied me and sometimes my young brother Hierot too, but I'm 16 and an adult. I pack a few personal items to keep me human for the coming month, mostly girls' things, not much as I have to carry it so far, and some pieces of woven lengths of wool I made during the winter to barter with, plus a dagger, of course. There are wolves in the woods, and even more dangerous, young men who lie in wait for us travelling girls. I've heard of others' experiences, and it makes me frightened. May the 10th, 650 CE. Now coming near to Sir Selborne through the hangar, I feel comfortable and at ease. Hangar has a warmth and kindliness about him. He's so old and wise. I always look forward to seeing the deer shrine on Hangar. Lots of ang antlers arranged in a circle, and I added another that I'd brought to honour the god Dior our brother. Hope for a better future and safety from illness and invasion. That's what we seek in shrines. There are some ponds at the top of the hangar that the sheep can drink from, so I stay overnight here and make an offer offering to Nikor, but even so, I don't catch sight of him. Plenty of water to share with other herders who are making the same journey as me. We talk in the evenings, but I've been warned by mother to stay apart mostly. People take advantage of young women on their first shielding journey. The next day, civilization. Silborn has a real berg. There's a daily market on the Plestor. I have to leave the sheep outside the burr, though, and so the only way I can visit the Plestor is with the help of Wendelin. I've met and befriended her this year, as it is her first shealing too. We take turns at visiting the market stalls. There are all sorts of fun things to look at. Brooches, bracelets, belts made from hide. I have no money, of course, but I do barter some of my wool weaving for good bread and fresh cheese. And great news, I'm halfway along once I reach Selborne. And I have all my sheep, still. Father and mother would be really proud. I leave Selborne with the sheep and Alja, heading for Wilma along the Oak Hanger stream. I have to pass through the checkpoint at Dorton. I am asked by the officious Egric to give my name, where I am from, how many sheep I have, and where I am going. I'm really vague about that part, actually. He also wants to know when I'll be coming back, but I don't know. When the days are shorter? He mutters something about regional security, a fresh concept for me. Why does he need to know all this? May the 17th. I press on towards Woolmer, still surrounded by deep, dark woodland and now with damp clay soil beneath our feet that slows up progress. At the end of the day, I am so tired. Can I catch sight of Ilf or worse, Dweorg, that I know always bring disease? They are certainly hiding out there in the trees. I feel so alone. After two days, I reach the forest of Wilma, it's used by the wealthy for hunting, so us herders must know our place and try to be invisible. 
I've been sleeping outside now for two weeks, protected by Alger. He often growls and barks through the night, so I've not slept much. I was given careful instruction on where to find our shielding, and I do, but it has been damaged and there is nothing much left of the livestock enclosure that surrounds it. First order of business is to build a replacement pen for my sheep so I can keep them safely together at night. It's hard work. I have watched and helped with making pens and repairing these huts in previous years, but now it's all on me. I need to get on with it. I scrape out a fresh hollow for the base of my shelter, as it is all filled in with sandy soil. All I need to enclose is room for my sleeping roll and perhaps Alger for company. I search and collect some pieces of timber to make vertical poles. Small oak branches are good. Then I gather lengths of hazel and pine and weave them between the oak poles. After three more days of tough work, I'm ready to thatch my shelter. It cannot be tall as I need to thatch the, reach the roof. I'll need a roof even though it has not rained since I was in Selborne. Finally, I have an okay shelter that the howl, wolves howl and the eagles swoop. I am fine, home at last with the sheep around me. Water for our animals is always an issue, as my parents call it, especially so in Woolmer Forest with such free-draining soil. <clears throat> Every day I take my sheep to Woolmer Pond to drink. All goes well through June and July, but by August, the water level in the pond has dropped so far, we have to trek through the muddy pond margin to reach water the sheep can drink. Then the mud cracks with drought. We have never, ever had such a dry period at Woolmer. While I'm at the pond one day, worrying about the sheep and the water issue, I'm approached by a tall man in a dark cloak and funny hat. He asked me if I'd like to make a sacrifice to one of, of one of my sheep, to Wade, the god of water, in exchange for his most powerful spell that, as he says, will almost guarantee rain. I give this a lot of thought. I finally agree to his terms and tell him I will select a sheep to sacrifice and meet him at the pond the next day. I leave my ewe, but with a heavy heart. Then I treat, try to be less emotional about my animals. One less sheep, but possible rain, is perhaps a good deal. That night there's a thunderstorm. I hear Thunor stamping around in the sky above us. Lightning dances around me. The sheep are terrified. Wolves howl nearby. Trees are uprooted by the wind. Owls hoot, but no rain at all. I am cross. I've been deceived. How much longer can my sheep wait for water? Only a few short days, to be honest. Time for my own spell. I find a large section of timber in the form of lagouche, that is the rune for water. I can take it to the pond and firmly stick it in the mud, still feeling angry and upset. But I make my devotion for rain to Wade. Two days later it rains, and rains, and rains. I take my flock to Woolmer Pond to drink, and there, almost immersed in this fresh rainfall, is the skeleton head of my sheep, with acorns pressed into her sockets. Never again trust a man with dark clothes and a strange hat. The days pass, the nights are longer, and there are fewer of us herders left. I need to make the return journey to Sudtone, it seems shorter than the outward journey. My sheep minus one are well. Alger wags his tail more. And apart from Egric, the grumpy security man at Dorton, who says I am not on his list for October, we have an easy return. Such a homecoming and reuniting with my family. The harvest is in and we now prepare to survive another winter together.